What's up with all of the Asian luxury brands collabs? Why does every brand launch an exclusive line there and everybody talks about going to the Asian markets? How did Louis Vuitton pioneer the collaborations in Japan and how China is transforming into the luxury industry leader? All of this we will cover today. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa. This is Tobao Brand, Luxury Strategy Explained. I share weekly insights on luxury branding. And if you haven't seen the first part of this video, click this link above. Now let's uncover the mystery of Asian collaborations with luxury brands. How it started, Louis Vuitton in Japan. Today we are going to talk about the increasing influence of Southeast Asia on the luxury industry. The main three spheres of influence are Japan, China and South Korea, representing the past, the future and the present of the luxury industry. As the markets are developing and the economies are growing in Asian countries, the influence travels from one region to another. It all started with the resounding success of Louis Vuitton in Japan, which almost turned into a disaster and pioneered strategies that everyone uses today. Louis Vuitton first entered the Japanese market in 1977, when it opened the first location in one of the Osaka's department stores, for the first time relying on their own distributor to import products to Japan from France. The brand very quickly realized what is the win condition on the Japanese market and started to utilize this knowledge by exploiting distinguishing features of the Japanese national identity and culture. There is a lot to tell about this case, so let me know in the comments if you would like to learn more. So one of these features is the collectivist mindset peculiar to all Asian cultures. Opposed to the American and European individualism with a focus on self-expression and freedom and contentment, Asian cultures enforce strict hierarchy, conformity and social harmony that always outweighs individual uniqueness. This mindset results in a very status-conscious behavior, the demand to prove yourself to the society and to build the face. That is why in 1980s, with the economic boom in Japan, around 20 million women out of 127 million of total population owned a Louis Vuitton bag. The brand was associated with prestige and high social status. It was perceived as almost a mandatory attribute of the urban middle class. And the Japanese women saved their money for eat brands like Louis Vuitton, contributing to their social welfare. Then Louis Vuitton borrowed the best practices of the Japanese retailers and convenience store strategies, drawing on the Japanese demand to experiment with forms and tastes and always try something new. 7-Eleven introduces new flavors and products every other week or so to keep up with the dynamically shifting interests of Japanese consumers. And when it comes to Louis Vuitton's strategy in Japan, they drew on the same strategy and pioneered the power of local collabs. In 2003, Marc Jacobs, who at the time was Louis Vuitton's creative director, first collaborated with the Japanese artist Takashi Murakami, introducing the recreation of a colorful pop version of Louis Vuitton's monogram pattern for the spring-summer collection. This limited line, designed as a part of the localization strategy exclusively for Japan, performed so well in terms of sales that it went worldwide and ended up lasting for five years. In 2003, Murakami line alone increased LV profits by 10%. But this collaboration was revolutionary not only because of its financial success, it also highlighted for the rest of the world how influential Japan had become in the past 20 years in pop culture with the rising of anime and Japanese modern art. Japan has become an experimental hub, a trendsetter for innovative endeavors and fashion. And in the upcoming years, all luxury brands followed. So now we have Gucci collab with Doraemon. Coach with Naruto, Love with Studio Ghibli, Hublot with Takashi Murakami, Aesop with an artisan Boisu, Gerlain with Arita Posen Lab, Stella McCartney with an artist Yoshimoto Nara, and Hermé with Kyoto Marble. As for Louis Vuitton, they nailed down the successful strategy by collaborating with Yayo Iksama in 2012. After the collection was immediately sold out, Louis Vuitton once again proved the power of collaborations and the recent follow-up collection with signature polka dots was a success too. 
Overall, Japan played a huge part in establishing collaboration culture for luxury brands as we know it today. It influenced the world of luxury with its unconventional and fresh pop culture and the fearlessness in the face of innovation. Today, Japanese culture is not as exotic as it seemed 20 years ago, but it still offers opportunities for innovation, although now it appears more and more in nostalgic contexts like Gucci and Loeb's collaboration with retro animation studios. That is why Japan may be perceived as the past of luxury industry that paved the way for new creative rules and mechanics. China, the future of luxury industry. Everybody is talking about China's extreme economic growth and rapidly developing markets. In 2022, it was the second largest personal luxury goods market worldwide. And in 2023, China accounted for 25% of the global luxury goods market. And three years ago, Forbes announced that China will lead the luxury industry by 2025 and the brands don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Although China is facing some embittered relations with the American and European governments, it is a huge driver for the world's economy and a very culturally enriched environment. China represents the future of the luxury industry because it experiences prosperity and growth combined with the same high demand for luxury items as the source of social status and acknowledgement as we already seen in the Japan's case. Its growth is projected to continue in the future, so is the demand for luxury items. And there is a very interesting opinion that explains more in-depth reasons behind the dynamic growth of the Chinese luxury market. Desmond Chum, famous Chinese author, wrote China is the most fertile ground for luxury brands because CCP destroyed traditions and religions in China and Chinese are socially competitive and status conscious. Traditions provide identity. As CCP has destroyed Chinese traditions, luxury brands step in to provide that. He further wrote, citing an unnamed expert, that bag tells themselves and the society around who they are. A lot of luxury brands increase Chinese cultural references during local holidays and festivals. It mostly affects the Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. And Louis Vuitton was once again among the first brands to collaborate with Chinese artists. In 2019, they started an annual tradition of launching exclusive capsule collection Arti Capucines in collaborations with different artists. Traditional Chinese craftsmanship and rich history stretching back to the times of the empire are very fruitful soil to enrich European luxury brands' heritage. This, combined with the technological progress and the rapid development of IT industry, creates a unique environment for luxury brands. For instance, recently Gucci has collaborated with the media giant Tencent to air four short films Gucci Inspiration Ma. And in 2019, Louis Vuitton designed an exclusive trophy for the League of Legends Championship. Prada have launched a special line collaborating with Chinese women's national football team. Thus, China is the nearest and perhaps the furthest future of the luxury brand's collaborations, and the perspective of it seems very interesting, so let's watch closely. Finally, I believe that South Korea is the presence of the luxury market and collaborations. It's no secret how popular are K-pop idols now. There are dozens of collabs with members of Blackpink and BTS. And they even become official ambassadors of the European brands. The reason is, despite the fact that Korean economy is growing slower than the Chinese, the unique blend of authentic culture and Western influence makes it very easy for Korean pop culture to burst like it does, reaching absolutely everyone worldwide. Chinese culture is more What? What was that? Chinese culture is more strict and isolated, so everyone needs some time to figure out how to communicate between European luxury brands heritage and Chinese traditions. And by the time the symbolic language for this communication is found, Korea may already outplay China, because its culture is easier to consume for European and American customers, and easier to integrate in luxury products. Korea is also known for its quite toxic relation to body and beauty. More than one in three Korean women from 19 to 29 years underwent a cosmetic surgery to look better. 
Such beauty conscious culture puts pressure on the individual to look for a certain way to integrate into the society successfully. That is why Koreans are also so fond of luxury items, to increase the appeal and compensate for the lack of stereotypical beauty. In conclusion, the Asian luxury market is a dynamic force that continues to shape the global industry. Japan's influence in fostering collaboration culture and Louis Vuitton's success paved the way for a new era of luxury. China, with its rapidly growing economy and status-conscious consumers, represents the future of luxury brands' expansion. Meanwhile, South Korea's blend of culture and influence driven by K-pop and beauty-conscious trends has made it a compelling market to watch. As the luxury industry thrives and evolves in Asia, we can expect even more collaborations and innovations on the horizon. Thank you for watching this video. Write down in the comments what country represents the future of the luxury industry for you. And if you learned something new today, don't forget to like this video. Ring the bell button so you won't miss the next video with more exciting insights on luxury branding.